I've been involved in this nutrients issue in the state of Montana really since 2011. The issue is the discharge of phosphorus and nitrogen into Montana water bodies. And the thought process was, you know, there's a lot of push nationally to see if we can begin to reduce the load of, of nutrients into streams and rivers. What started in principle as sounded like a reasonable and workable solution has really turned out to be a real mess in terms of public policy. Water resources have come to a point where we have significant challenges for the future that need to be addressed. Right now we have new state and federal regulations for wastewater that are requiring us to look at where is the community going to spend its money. I personally want to do what's best for the environment. That's actually why I took this job. Is this the sustainable environmental answer? If you have the right amount of algae, nutrients can actually be a good thing. There's been rivers around the world where they've actually added nutrients to the river to try and stimulate fish output. When you talk about additional chemical usage, more energy use, which means more greenhouse gases, when you talk about removing nutrients that may actually have a detrimental effect on fish, and then you talk about the additional cost for that last 10% of nitrogen and phosphorus. The question we have to ask ourselves is, is it worth it? In Montana, we've taken a really proactive stance on nutrient limits. This is more proactive than Colorado, Idaho, the Dakotas, and Wyoming. Even Oregon has not taken as proactive approach to nutrient limits as we have in Montana. The state's own report talks about how you get increasing trout population up to 150 milligrams. This is downstream, about five miles from the wastewater treatment plant. Me and my coworker are looking for nutrients. It's in the wadeable zone, we split up 11 transects where we go out and take the bug data and the rocks. We've done three years of testing. The average concentration of algae is 68 milligrams per meter squared. As you get closer to that 150 mark, it's actually better for fish. We're not even close to that. How much further can we go before we're creating environmental problems? They're not done. There, there will have to be continued upgrades to the wastewater treatment plants for communities all over the state. Local governments are now having to move at a much brisker pace than I think was ever contemplated in terms of meeting those numeric standards. And the problem with that is, is that because the technology is still very costly, local governments are incurring really substantial costs. We're talking 50 million, 75 million dollars. We're all willing to make an investment to have clean water in the state. To spend a bunch of money on something that isn't achieving a difference in stream water quality seems so counterintuitive, so counterproductive, and again, so inconsistent with what we had attempted to do by getting ahead of this issue nationally and trying to have kind of a 20-year glide path where we'd make incremental change. That's not where we are. The reasonable thing for governments to do is to say, okay, so now we can't comply on the terms that we thought we were going to be able to. So how do we need to change what it is that we agreed to do in the first place? Should we revise what we were attempting to do? Does this still make sense given what's happened to us? I think we owe it really to constituents to, to more than just kick the tires here. I think we really have to look at the history, decide whether it's something we're willing to live with, and to say, is this something that makes sense or, or do we need to re-examine it?